Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm James. Um, so today we're going to be taking a look at the next part in the video series for my IDEX 3D printer. Um, so I've pretty much finished assembling the frame. So let's take a look at the printed parts and how everything fits together. Okay, so before we get uh, into actually looking at the printer, um, I just want to say a massive thank you to the sponsors of this build. So 3D Jake were kind enough to provide uh, the filament for this printer. So this is their um, PETG filament, um, or our PETG, or recycled PETG. So I chose a nice green colour because I think that can't contrast quite well with the black. So Thank you to them for the filament. Um, Duet 3D have very kindly provided a Duet 3 um, as the main control board for the printer. Um, and we'll be going into more detail on that uh, particular product uh, probably in the next episode, maybe the one after. Uh, and then also a big thank you to E3D who provided the two uh, V6 24 volt hot ends for the printer. Um, so this is a, an IDEX printer, so we'll be using dual or two hot end assemblies basically. So yeah, massive thank you to them. Um, so let's crack on with the video. Okay, so let's start at the bottom of the printer and the printer frame. Um, so this is sort of an amalgamation of two printers itself. Um, the lower half of the frame is pretty much a D-Bot. Uh, a D-Bot Core XY, which is the printer where basically had all these extrusions came from. Um, it's the printer I had before, which you would have seen in the first couple of episodes. So basically I've just rebuilt um, the frame. I actually started at the top to get it to match the, the other printer we're using, which is the Cruiser um, IDEX printer from a designer called Hunter on Thingiverse. Um, and so he designed the, the printed parts at the top for all the IDEX system and everything else pretty much is D-Bot parts from other designers so if we look at the bed this is basically um, uh, a D-Bot bed and this rolls or a D-Bot modified bed I should say and this rolls on mini V-slot wheels which are in inside the frame um, and I had really good success with it on the D-Bot so I wanted to use that on here as well um, so that's really cool um, basically we've got a, a support part of aluminium extrusion here um, and then everything else is just basically printed brackets that hold everything together so the way that the top frame works is that it's not the the extrusions on the front and back are actually different heights so I will try and get some pictures up and explain how that works but basically at one end the extrusion goes all the way down to the to the desk um, and on the other one it's about well it is 20 mil higher so in that case the extrusion that we have on the cross beam is actually underneath the extrusion so I'll try and get some pictures up but that pretty much is the bottom of the frame. Um, here we've got a, a printed PSU cover. I haven't fully decided where electronics are going to go yet. Um, I was thinking having the, the power supply here because that won't interfere with the frame at all. Um, there's a big, basically a big space here which we can put stuff in. And then I was going to have maybe um, some green acrylic with the Duet 3 on the side. Um, so I'm a little bit undecided with where electronics are going to go at the moment, but that's something we can decide on or I can decide on later. Um, so what I'm actually going to do differently on this frame to compare to the D-Bot is have the uh, lead screws on the inside 
um, before they were actually facing the other way on the D-Bot. So I want to try and do it on like this, and it should work. Um, I, I was going to put them on the sides, um, but I would have to print or maybe modify the stepper motor bracket because the frame, the bed part of the frame is quite wide. Um, you can't get a stepper motor mount on the side. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, so let's have a look at the actual IDEX part. Okay, so here we are at the top of the frame. So like I said, the basically the top half of the printer is parts that are designed by Hunter. Um, and so I'll go into a couple of issues I had with the printed parts in a second, but essentially everything is moving really nice. Um, so it's, these are all, um, again, um, these are like wheels, but these are the larger style compared to the mini ones that are on the bed. Um, everything moves really nicely. I've got no belts in yet or any other electronics. Uh, I just wanted to get everything in place to see how everything fit. Um, so there may still be a few adjustments to make with um, basically moving some pulleys around, tightening bolts up, etc. So basically, a couple of the problems we ha I encountered with the parts. Now, um, basically, the 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 version two pulley mounts that are on Thingiverse at the time of recording are incorrect. They do not include a couple of um, parts of geometry that Hunter designed in software. They didn't get exported. So that's something that if you are thinking of building this printer, just be aware of at the moment um, that those will need to be adjusted. Uh, another issue I run into, which I will show you in a second, is to do with aluminium spacers. So I'll I'll show you that in a second, but we'll come back to it. Um, other than that, everything at the moment seems to be working okay. So, as you can see here, um, so this is a piece of 20 by 40 aluminium extrusion, uh, and the way it sits into the printed parts at the end, basically it goes down to a 20 by 20. So, I had um, a local um, maker helped me with a couple of things so he basically used his mill and cut off 20 down 20 mil and about 25 mil towards the ends and basically what that means is that there's a gap here but the wheels or the the actual carriages stop get stopped before they get to that cut so they work absolutely perfectly um, and this is then one solid piece which I'm really happy with so they are working really well and if I just grab a hot end or a hot end assembly I should say so these are our let me just make sure I've got the right one these are oh, let's just pick those wires up so these are our magnetic hot end assemblies and obviously I've got another one over here so these are modified Prusa Mark III extruders. They've got Bontech gears, obviously stepper on the front. Um, I haven't got Nokia fans, but these are silent fans. Um, not sure if they're going to be up to the task yet, but we'll see. And then obviously you've got the E3D V6 um, hot end in there. And they just basically just pull off, um, but they're incredibly strong. So I not have no worries about those doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to try, it's a bit tricky to get thin while I'm standing sort of next to it, but so one of the things I'm going to try is I've ordered some small circuit boards that are going to go on the front of the steppers. Now these will not get hit anything down here, there'll be a fan there and that's absolutely fine. These circuit boards are going to allow us to basically plug all of the electronics into the board at the front so we won't have any of the multiple wires going back and we'll be using um, a flat 26 pin ribbon cable from the from the little board on the front back 
down to another circuit board, same one, and then break out into the duet. What that's going to allow us to do is basically pull one cable out and take this whole assembly away. Um, so they're on order, um, and that's where that's why this project is so delayed because I've been waiting on parts um, from AliExpress, and they just take a long time to get here. But that's fine. I understood that was going to take a while. So let me um, move the camera, and I want to talk about some of the problems I had with the printed parts in more details and the aluminium spacers. Okay, so I just want to briefly touch on a couple of the issues I had with the printed parts. Um, and like I say, this is because they were exported from the design software incorrectly, um, and they are the ones that I downloaded from Thingiverse. So, basically, if we look at this part here, so this is part of our XY carriage, um, and this top part, so this is actually two parts, this top part is called the pulley cover. Uh, and basically this is where all the pulleys go. So what should happen is um, that this part it has all of the pulleys in for the belt system. So what should happen is that this part goes in here and then a pulley goes on here. Now, you think, oh well that, yeah the pulley's on there, no problem. Unfortunately this pulley is supposed to be at the top, not at the bottom. And what should have happened when the part was exported is that there should have been a cutout, a groove in this printed part for this pulley to go all the way to the top. So that wasn't present in the parts that are currently on Thingiverse and the parts that I printed. Um, I've got around it by just using a Dremel and modifying the part. Now you can't see it, um, so I'm not too worried about it. And we may come back and print it at a, a later date. That was one of the problems I had with the the part was just not going to line up. Um, the parts are also a little bit different um, in the sense that some of these holes aren't actually used, some of them have cutouts, etc. So the parts that are on Thingiverse aren't necessarily the ones that you will want if you are building this printer. So I've been email emailing back and forth with Hunter before, so I will mention that he can he should put those parts back onto Thingiverse so we'll see where that goes. Um, another problem I had so um, Hunter is basically taking his Creality CR 10 S5 and building creating the printer he has. Obviously I'm doing it a little bit differently so I had to buy all the parts separately so in the build guide and the the bill of materials it doesn't specify any in in terms of aluminium spaces it doesn't specify any sizes so i just assumed because most of the spaces are for the v-slot wheels which would go sort of here here and here um that you just they're six mil aluminium spaces like they're commonly known for being um, open build spaces for V-slot wheels etc. Unfortunately that is not the case so let me just zoom in a bit. Um, this is the space of the I bought. So this is a 6mm so 6mm in this direction. Um, a M5 hole in the top for the bolt and this is 10 mil in diameter okay so that's the spaces that I bought but the wheels weren't lining up correctly things were off and things were really tight on the extrusion so it turns out that the spaces I wanted were these ones these are basically Creality aluminium spaces um, and these are, uh, if I remember rightly, actually I think I've got the wrong space here. This is 9mm, but if we imagine that I've bought, so they're in different lengths, but this is a 9mm one. Um, what I actually needed was spaces that are 8.3mm high, still have the M5 hole in the top, but these are actually 8mm in diameter. 
and then this allows these um, spaces to fit actually down into the printed part and when they're down into the printed part they will then line up with parts that are over here so it's important to have the right size specifically for these aluminium spaces so that was one of the pro that was also a problem I had um, which is why things have been delayed slightly because I've been waiting for parts and trying to work out if I've printed them wrong or whatever so yeah so that was the problems a couple of the problems I've had which has held up the the frame construction okay so that is basically where we are at the moment with uh, the IDEX printer build um, like I say frame is built um, I just want to go around make a few adjustments tighten the bolts up etc uh, but it's essentially done so I think the next thing I want to do is to start mounting some of the motors so this is an IDEX printer which means it's going to have um, or this is a Core XY IDEX printer so our XY motion will be Core XY and then our U motor at the back here so there's a there's a bracket at the back here which actually has houses two stepper motors uh, one for the X or Y and then the X and Y the opposite one will be on the other side and then the third motor is what's called the U motor uh, and that works in our Cartesian style uh, kinematics to just move our one um, extra hot end assembly, our, our IDEX part so I want to get all the motors attached um, and then actually run some belt just to make sure everything lines up uh, everything still moves nicely and then once that is sort of I'm happy with that and if I need to make any adjustments um, I can start planning where I'm actually going to mount electronics so am I going to do that green acrylic plate that I talked about etc um, and then I'm also obviously waiting for the circuit boards that are going to go on the front of our extruders um, so yeah that's I think where we are at the moment um, if you've got any questions about the frame as it is at the moment please put them down in the comments and I will get back to you um, but for now I think that's all that I've got to say so thanks for watching um, please like comment and subscribe um, and keep on making